All right. Um, I'm going to speak in English. <laughs> I'll get to read the why in a second, so bear with me. Um, welcome, everybody, to Riskified. We're really excited to launch this CSR and high tech series. Uh, before I start, I want to give a big thank you to Dana for you know, helping to organize this. <laughs> yes, meetup expert extraordinaire. Um, and yeah, just really excited to have you all here today. Over a year ago, Michal and I met and we said, you know, there's a lot of great events out there for CSR H, uh, and sustainability, but there's nothing really for high tech companies and let's do something. So I also a big thank you to Michal for, you know, working with me on this, believing for, you know, being a teacher to me as well. Um, thank you. So what this CSR series is going to be is about every other month we're going to meet in a different company. These wonderful companies are on board already. Um, and we'll talk about different things about what we are, you know, ex experts in or, you know, in interesting things that, are, that we're working on in our companies, um, as well as have somebody come and talk about maybe some of our pain points, our challenges, those sorts of things that, you know, we as a CSR community can learn from. The target audience for this is CSR managers, but not just. If you are an employee branding manager, if you are working in HR, operations, whatever it is, you want to do CSR at your company, you are doing CSR, however it is, these meetups are definitely for you. So, about me. I'm the Senior Corporate Social Responsibility Manager at Riskified. I am a Canadian living in Tel Aviv. I made Aliyah almost six years ago. It's a long time. Um, before working at Riskified, I have over 10 years of experience in the third sector. I was kind of doing that math in my head. I said, wow. And I am a true crime podcast enthusiast, so if you ever have suggestions, please, please send them my way. Before getting started, I just wanted to say a few words about the swag item, because I don't know if everybody knows what it is. It's very cool, beeswax food wrap. When I was considering like what kind of swag we should have for this event, I wanted it to be something sustainable, something within the CSR realm. In case you don't know what it is, you can wrap food, sandwiches, your bowls, and the point is to use it instead of plastic wrap to reduce the amount of plastic that we have in the environment outside. Um, just one thing, don't use it for fish or meat or those sorts of things. Um, and yeah, I'm just, you know, all these people here are now, I hope, going to use less plastic, so thank you. Okay, a few words about Riskified, because you, you are all here, just to let you know what we do, who we are. We are a platform um, that prevents credit card fraud for e-commerce merchants. Um, about 10 years ago, we were founded, and when I started as a global uh, global CSR manager. We had offices in New York and in Israel, and we were about 200 employees. So it's really cool that they actually brought on a CSR manager to build at a very early stage in the company. Four years later, we're over 750 employees. We have offices in Shanghai, and we have sites all over the world, including Singapore, Japan, UK, Australia, um, and Brazil. So as I said, we began four years ago, and it sort of began with our CEO saying, we're a successful company, we want to give back to the communities that we live and work in. So it really started actually as a volunteer program for employees. But it's been four years and the program has evolved. And this year I said, okay, we're doing more than employee, brand, uh, sorry, employee volunteering. I don't want it to become synonymous, CSR, with volunteering. So how do we kind of break that? How do we involve everything that we're doing? So we rebranded to Riskified Cares. The things that I'm kind of covering right now, the major projects, and this is something that can evolve and can grow. That's why we kind of gave it a bit more general name. I want to be clear that the domain is still CSR, but the brand is uh, Riskified Cares. So largely what I'm working on is sustainability, working with our admin team to sort of make sure we're being green, the swag items, for example, today. Uh, working with OPA, if anybody knows about that, come talk to me after. A great way to reduce your food takeaway take um, at lunches. Uh, and recycling. When I started at Riskified four years ago, we weren't recycling, which is crazy. Affinity groups, right now our most active one is the LGBTQ Risky Pride, um, and I'd really like to see that grow, get more identity-based groups to be formed at Riskified. Tamura is another big project that I'm working on, um, and with them, basically we went public a year ago and we became one of their communicorns. So what does that mean? We were able to donate over a million dollars to different uh, nonprofits. And what we've done with Tamura is we're doing this over a number of years, so we can actually use it as an employee engagement tool. And finally, community outreach. Look, I said this is how we started. It's still an integral part of the program. So the community outreach is just a way for us to be able to engage our employees and get them involved in the community. 
And what it means at Riskified is we are actually encouraging our employees to volunteer on company time. It's a few fun pictures from volunteering. Um, and I'm on stage now, so a little bit of pat on the back for Riskified. <laughs> this is the first time we uh, were given two different uh, awards this year, very close to each other, the Trust Radius Tech Cares badge. And uh, we were recognized by Dun & Bradstreet as one of the top 10 uh, high-tech companies that are giving back to our communities. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. And I have to say, this wouldn't have happened without our amazing employees who are volunteering and the support of our leadership from day one. OK, community outreach. This is what I'm going to speak about the most today, how we've engaged our employees. If you read the little blurb, that you'll know this is sort of what I'm going to be focusing on. When I'm considering what kind of programs to take on, I consider whether they fall under tech, uh, entrepreneurship, Education, which means tutoring or uh, professional development, mentoring, those sorts of things, or employee driven. And what I mean by that is not like an employee coming to me to ask about a certain nonprofit, but actually with a whole idea of what to do. They actually might not have a nonprofit that they want to work with, but they have an idea of giving back to the community. And it's actually this sort of program that opened me up to the world of autism. I had a colleague here, I have a colleague here named Sarah, and she said, you know, I, I want to do something for the CSR, for the, sorry, I want to do a CSR program for people with autism. So I'm going to take a quick break. How many here in the room, with a show of hands, work with somebody who has autism knowingly? Okay, not a lot. How many people here know somebody in their personal life with autism? And you can see more. I think a lot of us have a little bit of like our stereotypes. This is maybe the only way we've ever been exposed to people with autism. Portrayals through movies, TVs. Some of the portrayals are pretty good. Some of them might be relying a little bit more on the stereotypes. So just a brief thing about autism. I'm going to read this part a little bit. I'm sorry, because I don't want to get it wrong. Um, but autism spectrum disorder is a complex development condition that involves persistent challenges in social interaction, speech and nonverbal communication, as well as different kinds of behaviors. The other thing that you might hear me say is neurodiversity. This is sort of just a different way of thinking. It is a variation in the human brain when it's related to sociability, learning, mental, uh, different mental conditions, as well as attention. And it was actually coined by somebody with ASD, Autism Spectrum Disorder, in the 90s, so actually not too long ago, with the purpose of removing the stigma of autism as being a disability. It's kind of just looking at a different way of thinking. And I think everybody here, knowing kind of some of the people who are here, would agree that diversity in hiring is a good thing. It's a benefit for the company. And we do it through gender, sexual orientation, culture, background, learning experience, all sorts of things. And this is another way of considering hiring people who are neurodiverse, because they'll come to the company with a different way of thinking, a different perspective, that again, can also be a benefit to the company. So unfortunately, despite all this, despite being able to be a benefit to a company, 85% of the people who could be working, who have the skills, who have the expertise, who have education, who have autism, are unemployed. <coughs> And basically, what ends up happening sometimes is, you know, uh, application comes across the table of a hiring manager, and they see ASD referenced on it, and they might say, you know, they lack the social skills to be able to, like, culturally fit. And this is a stereotype, and that might be true for some, but it's not true for all. Um, the other thing that could happen is, you know, some of the uh, job, uh, job process involves an inventory, a personality inventory, and these are definitely biased towards people who are neurodiverse. A neurotypical person will answer in a certain way, potentially get the job, but a neurodiverse person will answer differently. So basically, it was this statistic, as well as a personal collection, connection to autism, that brought Sarah to me with an idea to do something about this. So we came up with the Boost Your Career in Tech Mentoring program for people with autism who want to work in tech, who have the ability to work in tech, who have the skill set to work in tech. So what I'm going to do today is kind of break down that program. I kind of broke it down to six different components that I think helped make this program a success. Create the buzz, find the right partner, build the program, check-ins and support, celebrate, and repeat. So first off, create the buzz. Um, when Sarah came to me, she's the, my colleague who came to me with this idea, I said, okay, we don't have a nonprofit to work with, we have an idea, 
but how can we like, get the buzz going at risk of five? So we said, let's do a lunch and learn. As you can see, it was during Corona, so we had to do it on Zoom. And I had Sarah actually lead the, pro the, uh, the, the talk. She spoke about autism, she spoke about the challenges that people face in autism, and she announced the mentoring program. Even though we had nothing ready, we said, if we announce it, we're gonna have to do it, we're committed. Even if nobody in the community bothers to follow up with us, we're going to do this program. And what was really beautiful is after we met, uh, announced the mentoring program, we had a few employees come to us and say, I'm ready to volunteer. We said, great, we don't have anything yet. We'll put you down, we will follow up with you, we promise. The other beautiful thing that came out of it is people either during the uh, Zoom or privately after came to Sarah and said, thank you. My brother has autism and has been suffering with not being employed through his whole life. Um, we actually had a, a, a riskified employee who came up to her after and said, you know, I have autism. And just thank you for shining a light on it, for talking about this, for removing the myths that exist around it, and for doing something about it. The next one was to find the right partner. And this is where the real challenge began. We wanted a right partner because I'm a global CSR manager. I don't have experience with people with autism, with the community. I don't have access to it necessarily. I'm also busy with a lot of other things to have to kind of start recruiting people. So we really wanted the right partner who knew the community, who was working with the community. And we went from organization to organization to organization. Everybody loved the idea. Some people said, great but our population is not the right population to work with, they can't really work in tech for whatever reason. Or, great, but we just don't have the bandwidth to be able to do this. So then we got to Haguda Lebuyotetsibo and Alana Fisher, who's here in the audience. <laughs> and she was our godsend, I have to say. She came from a background of tech, she was working with people with autism, and she was working with people with autism to get them into tech. Again, I can't stress how important it was that we found the right partner, and the amount of work that Sarah had done to try to connect and go through all the different organizations was another example of why the program was a success. We took the time, it took us about nine months to get to Alana, but when we did and we had our first meeting, we were all super excited and we said, okay, yalla, let's go. <clears throat> so the next thing was build the program. Now, what was important was to understand who the mentees were. So before we even looked at the mentors targeted or the people who had volunteered, we said, let's recruit the mentees. Let's see what their needs are, what their experience is, what tech fields are they coming from? Uh, we spent a lot of time looking at their CVs, uh, going and having interviews with them. Mainly the interviews was to understand what their needs are, what their experience is, what they want and their expectations were. And only once we understood that, we looked at the mentors that we had, had volunteered and we said, okay, now we're gonna try to match them together and uh, do a good match between the two of them. There were some mentors that we, that we approached, sorry, there were some mentors that actually had approached us, and we actually had to say no to them. Uh, basically, you know, they had just started at Riskified or they just, this was their first job. And we really needed people who had experience and had networking within, this, uh, and within tech to be able to help the mentees. Our mentees were people who were working in low tech, people who were working in tech but were not out about their diagnosis of autism because they'd had a later stage diagnosis, or were working in tech but wanted to switch jobs, you know, data analyst to dev. The mentors who we did say, you know what, now's not the time, it was important to me to still engage our employees, I said, I have another program, we're working with Elvin, let's put you there. And in a year from now, when we're gonna do another cohort, because we want to, we'll re-engage you, you'll have a little bit more experience under your belt, and we'll talk to you again then. The other thing that we also talked about a lot was the length of the program. I know Alana wanted to do a little bit longer, okay, a lot longer, um, but you know, a lot of it is also just understanding my colleagues and who I'm working with, and I understood that they needed a start, and they needed a finish, so we did four months, meeting every other week, and it just helped to give our mentors, like I said, a start and a finish and understand that this is something they could sort of like bite off and chew. Every single mentor said to us, well, what if I want to meet more? What if I want to eat meat after this? They said, of course you can. We're just giving you sort of the parameters so that you can schedule this in. And if you feel like at the end of it, you need to stop because whatever it is, life milestones, work, whatever it is, you've done a good job and you've put your time in and you've made a difference. The other aspect of it was to have workshops. 
and we did this to have it sort of twofold. The first was to create content for our mentors and our mentees to have when they met up. So for example, we would do a CV prep workshop, and then the following meeting between mentee and mentor, they would talk about it. So we had the theoretical, and then they had the practical. And what it helped to do, again, was to create this structure for the program so that the mentors never sort of felt alone. Also to give a lot of information to the mentees and the mentors. We did ask our, all our mentees were expected to come, and we did ask our mentors to come, and some of them came, some of them didn't. We recorded everything, some of them watched it, and some of them didn't. But they had the information and they had the tools. The other purpose of having the workshops was to be able to engage more employees. So we did have people reach out to us who really wanted to help with the program, but they weren't in tech. So it wasn't the right people to match with the mentees. We said, great, do a, do a workshop for us. There were also other people who said to us, you know, I really want to help. I just don't have the time, but I would love to still be involved. OK, great, do a workshop. We actually had one mentor that we approached as well. Uh, we had somebody who was interested in QA. And we approached him. We said, you know, we have a mentee. He's interested in QA. Can you be his mentor? He said, you know, it's not the time. I don't have the bandwidth. Maybe I'm not the right person, but I want to help because this program is amazing. And so we did a QA workshop. We did a two-part series for the mentees who were already involved, but we also opened it up to more of the beneficiaries that Alana works with. So not only were we able to continue to engage our employees who wanted to be involved, we were able to also meet more people. And Avital is here, here, who's here as well, <laughs> sent me this message after the workshop. And I have to say, it really helped to validate what we were doing. I mean, internally I felt, yeah, we're doing the right thing, we're working with the right population, everything is, is good, but to hear somebody kind of from the outside of, of where I'm working validate this, it meant the world. Then my world crumbles a little. I get a call, come onto a meeting, Sarah tells me that uh, she's leaving Riskified. I said, oh my gosh, you know, it's always hard when a colleague that you really like, you get along with very well, is leaving as well. This was her baby. This is what her whole you know, project was. This is my ambassador to this program. What am I going to do? But Alana, her, and I, we, did, we spent a lot of time creating the structure, creating the, the partnerships between the mentees and mentors. So I actually knew it's going to be OK. On top of that, Sarah said, I'm going to mentor. It's OK. I'm going to continue to be involved in the program. On top of that, she said, when I go to the new company, Let's start, let's start it up there as well. And we had always discussed in the beginning that this was a pilot. If it was a success, we wanted to copy-paste this and work with other companies and collaborate with more companies. So the show must go on. Next step, check-in and support. This was also a critical component. We didn't just say, OK, we did a lot of like, time and work on pairing our mentees and mentors. Go, we'll talk to you in four months. We had orientations. We had sessions with the mentors. We had sessions with the mentees. Alana, che Alana checked in with the mentors and the mentees separately. We created a Slack group for the mentors so they could you know, exchange tools and knowledge and, and be support for each other. There was also a Slack group, a WhatsApp group, I'm sorry, for the mentees. All of this work to let them know that we're there for them, to help them, and to be with them every step along the way. And I have to say, I have a story how I think this really made an impact. I had a mentor who I approached. He was a wonderful volunteer of mine. And I asked him, will you be a mentor? I think we have a great mentee for you. I think it's a great connection. And he said, no, <laughs> I don't really want to be involved. I like, really want to support everything. He always would say yes to me. But I just, I had a really bad experience doing a mentoring program with somebody with autism 10 years before. I'm just, I'm not, I don't want to do it. So Alana and I, we got on the phone, we talked to him, we said, listen, this is a program that's going to be highly structured, we're not going to leave you alone, we're supporting you. If it doesn't work out with your mentee, it's okay, we'll find you somebody else. So halfway through the program, I got this message on Slack. And at first I'm like, oh my god, head exploding, he must hate the program, what did I do? I got this person to, you know, say yes, he's never going to say yes to me again, he's such a good volunteer, but as you can see, he loved it. He loved every single moment of it, learning stuff about himself, about the industry. It wasn't just about the mentee learning. Our mentors were learning as well, and this was really super great for engaging them. And I have to say, it's because of the structure we offered, it's because of the time that we spent matching our mentors and our mentees. Celebrate. After the four months were up, we were able to invite everybody to our beautiful offices here. 
Um, we hadn't had a lot of opportunity to actually have them in our office yet, because again, COVID and lots of restrictions. So we were able to host them here. Um, we had food, we had wine, kind of like today. <laughs> we had certificates and speeches. And we had seven mentees finish the program. As I, I think I said before, we started with seven mentees, and we ended with seven mentees. And this is not a small number, because Alana actually said to us at the beginning, listen, one of the challenges some people face with autism is follow through. So we might start with seven mentees, we might end with two, and that's okay, because we're still gonna give to it back to the community, we're still gonna make a difference on those two mentees. Seven mentees went through the whole program. Again, due to the structure, due to the support that we offered. We had eight to 12 meetings between mentor and mentee to show you that some people wanted to meet at more of a higher cadence, some people maybe a little bit less. Four sessions for the mentors to learn about ASD and mentoring tools for success. And again, you know, I think it was a very important component of this of not just doing for the mentees. We're creating ambassadors, we're creating inclusion ambassadors for people with autism, removing those myths that some people might have, removing the mysticism behind it. We had the eight workshops, which were lovely and actually quite interesting. Six of the seven mentees working after the program. And finally, seven amazing mentors who donated their time, experience, and knowledge. So now we repeat. Um, as I said before, this was a pilot project. If it was a success, we wanted to do it again. So what I was going to actually say here, if there are other companies here who are interested in working on this program, we are looking for more people, uh, more, um, both more people for, as mentees, but also uh, different partners to, to, to work with, different companies to work with. Alana has worked really hard over the last four or five months to get our recruits, and we're really excited to actually be starting soon with Guesty. So when I'm kind of thinking, like, why did I take on this program? How does it help me towards my KPIs? First of all, it touched on all my CSR focus areas. If you remember, I put them up before. It's a tech mentoring program. Uh, entrepreneurship, we had a wonderful Build Your Brand workshop led by Dana. Uh, we also did a LinkedIn workshop so people could sell themselves on LinkedIn. It was education, because it's a mentoring program, that's how I sort of define it, professional development. Uh, employee driven, as it came to me from Sarah, wonderful employee. The other thing is employee retention or engagement. Again, I don't think I have to make the argument to this uh, crowd here that volunteering goodness programs, they help to increase employee motivation, satisfaction with their job, which leads to retention. But I have a really good story to prove this. So I got this email not too long ago. Since Sarah was very active in riskified CSR domain and promoted the initiative of mentoring with adults with autism by assisting them in tech placements, she wanted to implement the same program at X, her new company. Sarah was told by the team in X that they didn't understand the need to include people with special needs in the tech field. My heart broke for her. You know, it's one thing to see a statistic, the 85%, and that's startling. You know, she had a connection with somebody with autism. To see that statistic, it's one thing, it's a statistic. But to see that bias in your, in your face, in the place that you work, it's hard. She said that some reasons for coming back to Riskify, yay! <laughs> Only after seven months, our Rebecca, thank you, our amazing culture and the opportunity to make a difference and run something she's passionate about. So this is like employee retention, but actually even better. Finally, DEI, creating inclusion ambassadors. Our neurotypical mentors were working with a population they might not normally be exposed with. And now they've met them, they're coming back to Riskified, and they can be a voice in support of hiring people with autism or with or neurodiverse people at Riskified, creating a more diverse and inclusive workplace. All right, wrapping it up. Our key take, my key takeaways from this whole program, find the right partners. As I said before, it's really important to find the right nonprofit partner, somebody who knows the population, who can give you access to the population, and who will work with you to create a wonderful, structured uh, program that will succeed. But it's also really important to find the right partner in the employee that you're gonna be volunteering with or working with. I have had projects that have come to me from employees, and they haven't worked. Not because anything was wrong with the employee. Maybe, again, life, stone, life milestones, work gets busy. It just sort of fell through. Sometimes we couldn't find the, the right nonprofit partner for whatever reason. So it's really important to find your ambassadors, the right partners in, in the program. Next is create additional engagement opportunities. 
I actually really just like doing this. Anytime I can get more people to volunteer, it's always a good thing. Um, and just to be able to engage different people. Sometimes it is something that they only need to have tech mentors or tech volunteers, but if I can kind of do some offshoots and get more people involved and feel like they're engaged, that's what I'm gonna do. And finally, not finally, sorry, number three, structure is key. This is probably pretty obvious. Obviously, you need structure to any project that you're gonna do and project management and all those sorts of things. But I have to say, this project specifically, we, again, I, can't, I know I'm like kind of going over this point, but it is a key to the success of this program. From start to finish, we were highly structured, we created support, we created check-in opportunities, and it really, again, led to the success of the program. You're creating inclusion ambassadors, you know, and it doesn't, this is not just for working with neurodiverse people or people with autism. It's anytime you're working with an underserved community, you're kind of creating an opportunity to erase those unconscious biases that we all have, all of us. <laughs> and you're creating your ambassadors in your workplace to work with these different underserved populations that maybe you're not necessarily yet. And PR and branding. I always say, like, there's a bit of a controversy, you know, is it okay to use CSR and volunteering for, pu for publicity, for, for marketing? Maybe it sounds like, see, it doesn't seem exactly right. But the thing is, is if you're doing something, something authentically, transparently, if you're doing what you're saying you're doing and you're helping the community, there's no problem using that to let people know that you're doing it. For sure, it gives the company a good name out there, <clears throat> but also it gives an opportunity to maybe inspire people. You might inspire another company, hopefully, to work with us on this program, or just in general, or you might inspire a person to give back to their community. And inspiring people to give back, to do social impact, it can't be a bad thing. So thank you very much for your time. <laughs>